for our lesson is going to look a little bit different today. I'm going to be going through some slides of a PowerPoint that I've prepared for you and I'm going to be talking in this little bubble at the bottom, just guiding you through and giving you some extra information so you're fully prepared and ready to answer the questions at the end. This is the first time I'm doing this, so bear with me if there's going to be some gaps or some mistakes as we go. I am going to try and get used to this, okay? So question one is asking us to complete the missing numbers. There are something equal groups of something pairs. We're trying to find the numbers that go in those blank spaces. So what is it asking us? There are something equal groups of something pairs. So how many lots of an equal group do we have? So how many lots do we have? How many times how many lots of that group? We have one group, two groups, three groups, four groups, five groups of pairs. So there's five equal groups. And they're equal because each group has the same number of pairs in it. Because we can check each bag has one, two, three pairs. That's the same for each bag, look. One, two, three. So we know there's five, five bags that equal groups of three pairs in each. So if I want to find the total number of pairs, I could do an addition sentence. I could do three add three add three add three add three, which would give me the total answer of 15. Now this takes a lot of time and it means writing out the number lots of times. A more efficient method, a quicker and smarter way to do this would be to use a multiplication sentence. So instead of doing three add three add three add three five times, I could do five times three, which is gonna give me the same answer, 15. And because in maths, we can swap the factors and still get the same product, that means we can actually flip those numbers around, five and three, and change it to three times five, and still get our same product, our same answer, 15. So that's how we've solved question one. Here we are going to look at some different representations, some visual pictorial pictures of some numbers and how we can find some number sentences inside them and how we can also draw these on number lines and as bar models. So here is my first number. So I could write some different number sentences about this picture. I could say I've got one lot of three one lot of three. I could say I've got three lots of one. So I can write both multiplication sentences, one times three is three, and three times one is three, because that is shown in that picture. If I wanted to show this on a number line, I would have to draw a number line starting from zero, and I do one jump of three. That is one times three, one jump of three. And if I was going to draw this as a bar model, I would draw one bar that is worth three. So if I had this picture, I could see that I have two lots of three or three lots of two. So I can write these multiplication sentences. If I was going to draw it on a number line, I would have to do two lots of three, which is two jumps of three. So I go one, two, each time counting on in three. So one, two, three, one jump, four, five, six is my second jump. And if I was gonna draw that as a bar model, I would need two blocks of three. Now, if we look at our final picture, what number sentences could we write for this? Well, we can actually only do the one multiplication because if we look at our counters, as rows going down, I have one, two, three, lots of three. But going across, I have one, two, three, lots of three as well. Which means for this one, we would just write three times three is nine. If we were going to do this on the number line, we would need to do three jumps of three. 
So one, two, three. Or we could draw that as three bars in our bar model. Three, add three, add three. Okay, so we are going to look at solving this question using our number line and our bar models as visual representations of what is going on. So, a baker has 24 tarts. She puts three tarts into each box. How many boxes can she fill? So she's got 24 tarts, that's her whole number. And she's putting them into boxes of three, so I'm dividing them up into groups of three. So I'm going to have to complete... 24 divided by 3 to solve this question. On a number line then, I can use this to work out how many boxes I'm going to fill. If I jump on in threes until I reach 24, I can count how many boxes I will make. So we add on one jump of three, or one bar if we were showing it as a bar model. And we're going to keep going jumping on in three. So add another three on and I get to six. Add another three, I'm at nine. Add another three, I'm at 12. And I'm gonna keep going, jumping in threes until I reach my whole number. Now I've reached 24, which is the whole number we were starting with. So now all I have to do is count how many jumps or how many bars it took to get to 24. So let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It took eight jumps or eight bar models, chunks of three to get to 24. So I know 24 divided by three is eight. And I could also do this going the opposite way. I could start with 24, my whole number, and count backwards, taking away three at a time to see how many jumps, how many boxes I'm going to fill with tarts. So jumping back three takes me to 21, to 18, to 15, and so on, all the way down till I get to zero. Once I reach zero, once again, all I have to do is count how many jumps or how many bars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight jumps, eight bars, and that is eight boxes she can fill with tarts. Another way we can use number lines to help us with our three times table is for solving bigger multiplications, ones that are bigger than what we know off by heart. So 19 times three is a lot bigger than what we usually practice. We practice up to 12 times three. But I'm gonna use a number line to help me solve this. I started from 12 times three and counted up seven more threes. She's given us an idea of where we can start on our number line. Rather than counting up each tiny little jump of three and doing it 19 times, She's going to do one big jump at the beginning with her biggest multiplication of three that she knows, which is 12 times three. So we get our number line. We're going to do that big jump first, 12 times three, which is 36. Now, we've already done 12 jumps, so we need to do seven more jumps so that in total we do the 19 jumps that we need to. So if we add on three gets me to 39. Add on another 3, 42. I'm going to keep adding until I've done another 7 more jumps. Now I've jumped an extra 7 times. So that means I've done 12 times 3, 13 times 3, 14 times 3, 15 times 3, 16 times 3, 17 times 3, 18 times 3, and that final jump, which is 19 times 3, which gives us the total 57. See how that technique saves us a lot of time. It's really efficient, because instead of doing 19 little jumps, we've only had to do 8. Okay, I want you to think about your three times table in your head and try and count along with me as I place it along the top of this PowerPoint. So we have three, 
6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33 and 36. That's all the way up to 12 times 3. Now what I want you to have think about is the odd and even numbers in the three times table. So which numbers are odd and which ones are even? I've highlighted for you the odd numbers in yellow. So you've got odd numbers in yellow and even numbers are pale. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 3 is 15. 7 times 3 is 21. 9 times 3 is 27 and 11 times 3 is 33. That is all the odd numbers that we've produced in the 3 times table. If we look closely, we can see that each of these number sentences, these multiplications, are made up of an odd factor times an odd factor equaling an odd product. Each number is odd. Odd times odd equals odd. Now, let's look at the even numbers that were produced. 2 times 3 is 6, 4 times 3 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18, 8 times 3 is 24, 10 times 3 is 30, and 12 times 3 is 36. If we look at each of those number sentences, we can see it is an even number times an odd number equals an even product. Even factor times odd factor equals even product. That's something to remember about the three times table, something very interesting. Whenever you times an even number by three, it's going to make an even product. So you can check back when you look at your work. If you are timesing an even number by three, you know that your answer should be even. And if you're timesing an odd number by three, your answer should be odd. We're going to have a quick look at some reasoning now, thinking about why something makes sense. Why is this the answer? So let's have a look. Which card has the greater value? Let's first think about what that question means, the greater value. It's asking us who has the bigger number, the bigger answer, if you worked out both cards' value. If What are they worth, each one? So we know over here that he has five that's nice and simple he has five the value of his card is five but over here we're not quite sure what the value of his card is because we have to work out the answer so we have 18 divided by 3 I can use a bar model to help me solve that 18 is my total so I place that bar at the top and I divide an equal length bar underneath into three equal chunks because I'm dividing that 18 into three equal chunks. So now I need to work out if I divide 18 into three equal chunks, how much am I going to have in each chunk? I'm going to have six. Six times three is 18 or 18 divided by three is six. So now I know the value of his card is six. So if I was going to show which person has the greater value card, I'm going to have to use my greater than and less than symbols. Because 6 is greater than 5, when I place my symbol, I'm going to make sure that the greater side, the large side, is facing my large number. And my smaller side is facing facing my smaller number. Using what you've learned in this PowerPoint and everything that we've done previously in school and at home, I want you to work through the questions on the three times table using your neatest writing to explain answers and making sure that your writing as well for your maths is neat too. I've been noticing some people are getting a bit scruffy with their paper. Make sure it's one number per square. If you haven't got squared paper, make sure you are spacing out really evenly so that your numbers are clear and easy to read. Off you go.